Okay, hello everyone. I am super excited today because my guest today is Nalaya Chikana and I am so happy for having this wonderful woman here. And I am so excited because this talk that we're going to have, I am really sure that some of you will really take back from that talk something that is very powerful. And um, before we start, now, Nalaya, tell me, how are you feeling today? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually not feeling so great. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm. I mean, I'm. It's a pleasure to to meet you. Um, but yeah, I've I've had a couple of nights that were um mm. difficult. Uh, my baby girl is is getting another tooth, so she's had oh, a little bit of fever. Okay. Um, this kind of thing, no part of motherhood. <laughs> okay, okay, I get it. So uh, let let's say spiritually, I'm feeling really good. Physically, I'm feeling like ah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just hope that after this talk, you'll have a little more energy in your body. Um, I think so. Yeah, so you guys, you need to know something about Nalaya. Nalaya says that she doesn't call herself anymore an intimacy life coach. She doesn't call herself anymore a tantrika. She calls herself a lover, a sister, a mother, and a friend. And that resonated <laughs> so much when I read that. And I need to also take that quote directly from you and and just just say it right now i believe it's my life that reveals the truth of what i teach and this is a beautiful quote because it's like walk it as you talk it right <laughs> just amazing the life that you believe in i i love that quote and my first question to you that the a little bit more serious but not that serious Nalaya, what's your story what made you you can you say that Hmm. I know it's not an easy question, but yeah, it's like I I hear all of these stories in my head. I'm not quite sure which one to choose. Mm. <clears throat> I suppose in a way I could say like I I was raised internationally. Mm -hmm. Um. So my my journey of getting lost, losing myself, needing to find my identity, my path, my culture, had everything to do with um. I suppose you know being raised in multiple countries is enriching like it allowed me to be multicultural speak multiple languages um, but it also I suppose my inner work was about how to truly connect because um, I, I guess I become I became a master at letting go letting go of places lives I constructed uh, but also uh, partners so one of the patterns that I saw I had was to choose men that weren't exactly it mm -hmm. uh, so that I could leave them and I think we all create patterns in whatever way right then very often it is connected to our past our upbringing something to do with our parents for example I mean my parents are actually a really great example of, of a beautiful marriage mm -hmm. um, you know they're still in love together and have gone through all of these uh, different phases um, and for me, I, I saw that, yeah, you know, eventually after having uh, moved through all kinds of ways of relating, um, experimenting a lot with my own sexuality, I also came to a point where I knew that what I wanted was a family and walk my path with the love of my life and not just any man, but really a man I feel at home with. Mm -hmm. And in order to get there, I had quite some inner work to do regarding um yeah, deeper layers of connection, deeper layers of intimacy and allowing that. That resonates with me so much. Many of my clients, my female clients, ask this question when they're single. It's like, how can I find a right man? I sometimes ask them, do you think you are a right woman for a right man? It's like, if you want that beautiful, everlasting love, that intimacy, that closeness, that connection, are you really open to to be that person it's not going to just you know come from somewhere rescue you or whatever it's like you, you need to do the work yourself because this way you will see that man he will be in front of you and you will transform even deeper when being together actually but what you said as I understood it and really felt it is like you really got to do your own work first and then kind of look into your relationships and and look at those mirrors like where am i pointing out how am i feeling in that like the feelings are the barometer of, of where are we 
Um, and and I really find that very beautiful what you've said. And um, what do you think is the biggest like struggle, obstacle, maybe a challenge for women today when it comes to actually getting close to that identity, the true identity, the, that authenticity inside of them? What is the biggest challenge? What do you think? Yeah. Before I answer that question, I just want to point out that I really love that you um, you said, like, how is the reflection in all of my relationships? Mm -hmm. So to already see, like, um, you know, a part of you is reflected in friendships. So, for example, if there is a lack of authentic truth, like we all want things to just be spoken about. Right. If there is anything between us. Yes. Um, and if that, for example, is something lacking, the question becomes, how can I be the one to break the ice? How can I be the one to step up my level of authenticity so that my friends can meet me in that space? Um, so one of the struggles I went through in the past was that, you know, I, I've been a coach for a long time. I mean, before that, I was more doing like energy healing sessions. Um, yeah, we can talk about that later if necessary. But um, I've been in this position and I guess that kind of weaves into your next question. I was in the position of like helping others but it leaked into my personal life. And therefore I would have these friendships who leaned on me a lot, mm -hmm. which in a way is really beautiful. Like I do believe that friendships, there should be like a mutual support. But whenever I was going through something, I always felt like I wasn't met in the way that I was able to meet the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I had to do my inner work on what does it really mean to, first of all, um, attract or give space, let's put it like that, give space to the friends that are already in my life to actually be able to give to me. Because mm. it's not about their lack. I mean, sometimes it is, but um, it's too easy to point fingers, right? It's like, how can I actually open up to receive the support that they're very willing to give? I always ended up doing it myself because that's the easy route, or it was for me anyway. And so to answer your last question, like what is really the difficulty these days for women, I think has a lot to do with um, what I call the archetype of the strong independent woman. Oh. So she's, you know, she's, uh, many of us run our own businesses, but even if you don't, I think there's this underlying um, message that is fed to us through Instagram, through whatever we encounter in media in, in whatever form or shape that basically sends the message that if you are X, Y, Z, you are strong and therefore a powerful woman. Yeah. And what I actually discovered for myself is that it takes away from the true feminine mm -hmm. and it's this feminine power i mean i don't actually like using that word because in a way the true feminine which is not feminist i think the feminist gets in the way of of having a really masculine man by your side yeah um because yeah, like the feminist that. yeah she's self-reliant she knows how to deal with her shit she can take decisions and none of that has to change no like i'm still an empowered woman but my longing for myself came from this point of like i, I want a man who can freaking take the initiative, make the decisions, who I can lean on so that that part of life is taken care of yeah. uh, so that I can really be in my feminine. And that accentuates his masculinity. And so I, I suppose that's the practice, not to kind of see like, where are you protecting your feminine? What does femininity actually mean to you? Um, in what ways do you allow it to come out in your friendships? And it comes down to this level of vulnerability, you know, like how do you receive receive help, receive wisdom from others, receive guidance, receive whatever teachings. And I think that that in itself can be like a really beautiful practice to stop saying, I know, or I can do it and yeah. just allow. Yeah, exactly. That, that was so deep and beautiful. Really, I, I, I had goosebumps on my back because this is exactly what I also teach the women that, that, that come for help to me. And they are all so strong and so independent and they are sick of it. They're sick mm. of it because this archetype, the moment you said that, and I was like, oh my God, it's all over the world. <laughs> and um, it's sad, actually. I love, but it's sad. Um, it takes away our femininity and being strong female doesn't necessarily mean that we are in our feminine, well, from lack of better word, power. 
Mm -hmm. um, and there is this aspect of vulnerability that we need to be open to receive. And this strong, independent woman, that archetype doesn't want to receive anything because she protects that image that she already has everything and she can do everything by herself. And that actually creates a very long shadow because there's no place for a man to be. There's a place for a boy who wants protection. Mm -hmm. A boy who, who wants to stay a boy. And these women, they're very often complain, I can't find a man. There is no man for me. I mean, are you actually letting him be a man? Are you actually open to surrender sometimes? Surrender doesn't mean giving up. It doesn't mean giving away your your your, your energy, your goods, your your power, your your anything. It means actually that you can just melt into that safety that he wants to provide for you if he knew how that's the moment you need to open your mouth and just communicate that sometimes i just want to lean lean in sometimes i just want to not know stuff sometimes i can act as a little girl who doesn't know things sometimes i want to be that one who can cuddle you but i, I want you to create that space with me not I am a strong female who can actually run everything and have everything under control, including you, <laughs> because that's an illusion. Mm -hmm. That's just an illusion. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, it really, it really landed. Yeah, um, Nalaya, tell tell us now. What are what, what do you think are the best possible or your favorite, for that matter of fact? practices or tools that you can use or practice in order to really dive into that feminine side of ours to really lean into that femininity and let a man be a man what do you think could, could actually help in that hmm. i mean you're, you're speaking about basically the phase before the man is there. Like I'm, I'm guessing we're having this conversation mainly targeted at at women who long to be with their man. Or would you want me to answer it also coming from the relational? Yeah, yeah, I will answer it both because sometimes it doesn't matter whether they are already in a relationship. Something, something doesn't click there, right? What, what, yeah. What can women actually do? What do you so think? maybe I can give some examples of of my life. Of course. Because um, yeah, when I look at certain ex-partners that I had the potential of us working out was there and I think that that can be like a good start to just see ourselves for how we acted or how certain situations played out right like I'll give you one example um one ex is definitely very masculine definitely had it in him to uh take the lead take initiative in a way that actually was very uncomfortable for me at the time and for some reason, money played out in, in various of my past relationships, meaning there would be a situation where, for example, he missed his flight back to his country. And I, the first reaction I had was, okay, I'll pay the ticket for you. Mm. And I had many of these moments. No, I was financially quite strong, um, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with women being strong in, in their financial um, part of life. However, it's it's like the way women relate to money, I think is different. Like for me, it was always energy. It comes and goes. And the way I spend it is kind of like love. Like I love you, so I'll spend on you. But it's very tricky. And what I actually did in that moment is I took away an opportunity for him to stand up in his masculinity and find a way out for himself. Yeah. But what I did is I stepped into the mother role, taking care of him in a way that emasculated him tremendously to the point where that was probably the breaking point mm -hmm. where the continuation of our relationship became him feeling inadequate and me trying to protect him from feeling inadequate. So I put a lot of emphasis on there is nothing to um, give back. Like he felt like he owed me something and I told him no, but that was there because men relate to money as power. Mm -hmm. And so he wanted to bring back that power in order to balance and from there onwards, I hated the fact that I needed to protect him for his inadequacy because it's not how I actually saw him um, until that happened. Sure. And so anyway, the whole thing got ruined there, no? Mm -hmm. 
um and and there's various examples like that so i, I guess when you to answer your question it, it i guess it starts by really reflecting okay what teachings that we receive through our father and mother not just what they represent as the role models in our life but also how they related to each other and then of course our our ex-partners mm -hmm. um and the way that we dealt in certain situations to really see how did I contribute? Because of course, you know, the universe, their karma, your karma, it's all entangled, but these scenarios don't just happen. And in my case, as many other people experience, it's like there are certain patterns that are really clear. And the way to break it, I mean, I've constructed a, a beautiful program that helps people move through these phases. But if you're, you know, on your own wanting to like analyze this by yourself, it's really to see like, okay, where's the pattern and doing the inner work isn't just going to break it. You're going to be tempted by life. So the next person you, you come in relationship with, it's not just because you prayed, oh, please let there not be any power struggle between us. It is going to come up again. And that in that moment, that is the moment that you get the opportunity. Do I step into my mother role or my masculine role and take care? Or do I step back, become soft and really sit in my heart and either directly or indirectly let my man know I trust you. Mm. And I know that however you're going to handle this situation, you can handle it. And whether we actually say it or we don't, that is like the, the breaking point for something to break open and for an old pattern to break away. And, and the way that we then, you know, continue to practice in these kind of situations, which is going to be different for everyone, depending on the patterns that are present we get opportunities to do things differently. Mm. I was listening to you like I was hypnotized, really. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it moves me. And, you know, I, I in my program, I, I, I use hypnosis sometimes. So I know what I'm saying. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Amazing. It really, it really speaks to me, you know, because um, it's so crucial to actually dive, in, dive deep into yourself and really know the patterns. We don't know when it happens after it happened. After mm -hmm. we obviously how we when we feel like crap, it's like, why is it happening again to me? Like what's going on? And I don't and I found myself in this position also uh, with my wonderful, beautiful husband, who I chose to be my husband, right? And at some point our marriage was really on the edge of, of, of breaking. Mm -hmm. And and I was like thinking, what the hell is happening? You are so charismatic. I loved you. I fell in love with you like in a moment. And I knew you, I, I can create something beautiful with you. What is it that I, I'm experiencing right now that I look at you and you're not a man to me. Like you're a boy to me. I don't want to have sex with you, which is, which was really, by the way, such a painful thing because I deal with love with, with, intimacy with with sex with sexuality femininity with desire in in my programs in my work with my clients and i here find myself exactly in the situations that my clients struggle and i'm like what the hell is going on what the hell is going on what what is my lesson here but very shortly it really came down to me and i realized oh my god i'm becoming a mother to you it's mm. me it's me who ignites that it's not you, me who ignites that. And then I, there I was, oh my God, Walter, stop it. Listen, what, listen what he has to say. And I'm like, I just had this really tough conversation with him. And we started with, do you want to be with me? And actually every week we sit, sit aside and we just look at each other's eyes and do you still want to be with me? Because these rings, they don't mean nothing if we don't want to create that. But then we said, yeah, I want to be with you. And I said, yeah, I also want to be with you because we have a beautiful story and I, and I know we have the potential to go and create something beautiful together. But this thing, how I feel right now, I don't want that. That feeling in me right now would say, I don't want to be with you. So we need to change something. And we actually very quickly identified that, you know, I was that girl who was raised up by that strong, independent woman who was making money, who was taking care of children, whose husband doesn't know how to make food still. <laughs> and, um, and I was raised by that woman. And I had these qualities in, in me and oh my God, who wasn't there? I don't want to be like my mom or my dad. And here I am like my mother. 
exactly. Yeah, and um, and my husband had, came from a family where he also had this strong mother. That strong mother mm. figure. It was our patterns like ideal. They mm. were ideal. They were matching like like puzzles. Mm. Then 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 we were like asking ourselves, do we want that to have control over us? Or maybe we will step out of that, not knowing what anything will bring, but actually, you know, committing to something new. I very often ask my clients to really commit to something, 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 anything, just for beginning. I don't know, go to gym together, jog, have yoga, or commit to a, a sex date every three, four days, whatever that is, but co-create that and look how it works for you. If it works for you, keep it. If it doesn't change it, but do something together, something totally out of the box. And we mm -hmm. did it. And it actually healed that these patterns. And and I'm I'm very happy to say that they does they don't affect us anymore. That doesn't mean that I don't feel like a mummy sometimes or a little girl sometimes. Because it's very important to actually see when do I become that role. And mm -hmm. then step out of that and I'm, oh, I see myself as my mom again. Ooh, silly me. <laughs> But I don't have to play that. Actually, yeah. I'm plus, in, in those in those moments that you feel the mother triggering you, often it's actually because he's stepping into an energy. So you're giving him an opportunity to rise up. Yeah, yeah. And not fall into his old pattern of uh, his juvenile self. I also loved what you said that it was actually you who could create a space for him to really take care of, of himself, to really get into his own maturity, his own masculinity. Because this is very often what we women, I think, do too often. We step into, you know, being the rescuer. Mm -hmm. We don't want you to feel pain. I can take that for you. No. And it's because we're women. This is like the tricky part because we feel so much. So we want to prevent them from feeling the discomfort, but they're not as emotional as we are. So mm -hmm. the way we approach it is so womanly. It, often it's not even necessary. Or yes. even the way we communicate, it's like my husband teaches me to just be straightforward and not even explain myself. Yeah, It's like, I, I need the morning, period. He doesn't need to know whether I had a bad night. It's like, I'll ask him and he'll do it. That's awesome. That's awesome. This is... A very similar dynamic in my marriage it's like i just say stuff sometimes i feel i, I in the beginning i remember feeling a little bit even guilty like mm -hmm. i want this time for me like i want this space for me just just for me right i'm, I'm going out with girls just before i said that i was like mm, should i or maybe shouldn't i and i'm like okay i i say it i said <gasps> what's his reaction right <laughs> and it was it was always like okay should i pick you up or something <laughs> And that was awesome because I very often, I very often want to remind women that it's, it's we women, when we step into our femininity, we are the ones who make men men. <laughs> yeah. They have their mothers, they have their children, they can be fathers, they can be children to their mothers, to their fathers, but we are those people who make them adults and emotionally and energetically which is a very tough role sometimes, but so, so needed, so needed. Um, yeah, I think it's really beautiful, you know, that you share that you reach this point where something had to change mm -hmm. because both me and my partner are actually in the realm of relationship, mm -hmm. um, a little bit different uh, the way that we approach it. I mean, he works more with men and I've chosen to now only work with the strong independent woman, actually, um, because I've seen my own patterns. And in the past I worked with, a whole range of people mm -hmm. but I asked myself you know now that I'm a mother it's like I have this little time to actually put into a project so I asked myself like what do I really like who's the person I really 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 want to work with and it's a strong independent woman because I have seen for myself I've heard stories of, of my partner um, but also the clients we have worked with over the years and the conclusion I've seen is, is pretty simple most relationships either fail or end up in this place of like, okay, we're either going to make it or break it because the woman is unable to step into her feminine and the man is unable to step into his masculine. Like mm. the way I see it, it's, it's literally that black and white and that simple. 
but it's super difficult, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, the answer is yeah. really simple. But when I look at the complaints I used to have in the past, it's my man didn't support me enough. He didn't take initiative enough. He didn't blah, blah, blah. But the fact that you in your marriage were able to raise up that maturity and use that experience also to like share with your clients. Um, but mainly it's like rebalance where you're at with him, I think is so powerful. For me and my partner as well, it took us to just have different relationships to end up in a space where we could actually move forward in a different way. And we haven't experienced that imbalance because we won't allow it. Mm -hmm. Like he's very good at it. Um, yeah, I mean, if I'm honest, it was our relationship since the beginning has been more about me softening um, and him not allowing his masculinity to waver. Mm. So he just won't allow. I mean, of course, we have our moments where, you know, he's in a quote unquote weaker position, but mostly he's just like grounded, clear, direct. You know, I'm the one who went through the whole transformation of leaving the country I was living in, getting pregnant, becoming a mother. So I guess there was just a lot to it that he needed to hold space for. And because I was removed from my security, my community, my family. I mean, all of this happened during the pandemic, right? So I was in a wow. new country. So, it, you know, it really pushed me into my feminine. And I think even though it was a hardcore way of learning or softening, I do believe that for my own personality is what I needed. And it has really allowed us to build our foundation based on those principles. So when I hear your story, it's like, yeah, you ended up in a place where probably a lot of relationships end up in where it's too easy to refer back to the patterns that you had in the past where you're self-reliant and you know how to make the decisions and you don't necessarily need to ask for x y and z because you can do it but then suddenly you're in this dynamic where your body doesn't long for him anymore sexually and yeah. that is such a clear indication and it's biological right because whether you want to become parents or not your body is constantly connecting with the pheromones and checking in on, you know, the way he moves and the way he speaks and the way he manages situations. And if he diminishes his masculinity, your ovaries are just going to like shrink or. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I very often see that. It's very, I mean, it's crazy, but it does happen. Sometimes it, what it really takes is some, some simple communication tools. Like, are you listening I know you, you're hearing yourself, but are you really listening? Like, is your is your relationship really um, a, a growth area for you? Or is it like diminishing you? Is it serving you or is it blocking you? Is it, if I was your relationship of you two people that I work with right now, um, I would say to you like, dudes, like get your shit together and just work, solve it. Because I'm dying here and you're like blaming him, he's blaming her. And all of these piles of blame just round up and everybody's just not happy. And what's really, what's really important sometimes is just to let go of control, let go of this need to be right. And I, I would love to know your opinion on that. Sometimes I, I advise my clients, you need to let go of this need to be understood and step into just admiring and being grateful for the presence, pure presence, unconditional presence, which which just leaves you the space, which gives you the space to be you, whatever that is in that particular moment. And whoever you are in that particular moment, without any judgment, without any expectations, just let go of that. I, you need to understand me so I will explain it to you because my mommy my mommy did this my daddy did that and whatever and this is why I am what I am no you don't need to do that you don't need to explain yourself you don't need to be understood you need to understand yourself nobody else it's nobody else mm -hmm. nobody else's um responsibility to understand you and your emotions you have the capacity and potential to create something beautiful just because you're present. And this is what you can expect from another person. Just expect pure presence. I would like to know your idea about that. Because many women just like, what do you mean? He, she shouldn't understand me or something? And I'm like, I'm really, really explaining that them very, very, very long hours sometimes. But in the end, it, it works. 
what's your opinion? What's your point on that? Yeah, this was also a pattern of mine, actually, like the longing to be understood. And I'm quite a complex woman. No, I was raised in six countries, so I have this whole sort of dynamic. And the way I've created my own inner culture makes it often difficult to understand me. But if that becomes the narrative to look for the impossible, um, because that's also part of the game of life, right? Um, if you were always understood, like where is the, the challenge to soften, basically? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and also, I do feel like this is part of the mystery of being a woman you are complex and you will forever be complex yeah. like there is a there is no handbook for what it means to be feminine and there never will be because the feminine brings the chaos the feminine brings the abstract the feminine is not connected to words actually mm -hmm. she's all feeling and she's timeless and so this part of the mystery is something that women only can really touch and so the way I would respond to that question, or if I would meet people who are like, ah, I don't feel understood, it's like dive deeper into sisterhood. Um, mm -hmm. See in what way you can come together more often, because if we look at like our far, far, far ancestors, or even like the tribes that still exist nowadays, there is a clear division between certain things that men and women do. Yeah. And it's not to black and white stereotype or say you're incapable of this or you're capable of that. It's not. It has a lot to do with our primal nature. Mm -hmm. And women need women. And mm -hmm. this is something that for me has really started to come out now that I am a mother. Um, because the role that we play as a mother and a father, like the, even the way our baby connects to either him or me, is going to be very distinct. And there are things that she will need to rely on me for and other things that she can rely on him for. Mm -hmm. And it's never going to be equal, so to speak. Um, but the way like the equality exists happens over time. So it's like, OK, maybe the first years, let's say the first seven years, our children, because there is more babies coming, <laughs> are going to need me more. But maybe when they're older or start asking a lot of questions or need more play or need whatever, he's going to need to contribute a lot more. And so where to find that balance? You know, we also have had fights about things don't seem fair, right? Yeah. And what I've noticed is in these emotional outbursts that make no sense, it's simply us women feeling way too much, um, you know, and everything feeling it's all mixed in right like I feel my partner and I feel myself and I feel my baby and then I don't sometimes even in the past no, like right in the beginning when we were still kind of transitioning like in that new territory of like okay we're actually parents now and I think this happens to literally everyone because it's an issue and then in initiation process that takes time and I need my sisters I need to just go blah and they will understand yeah exactly. because the woman can touch that chaos, that abstract. And even if that experience is not yours, your body will recognize it because it's a primal part of who you are as a woman. Mm -hmm. And for a man, it's like, yes, a man needs to be your rock. He needs to be your tree with very deep roots. He needs to hold you. He needs to provide that safety, but he doesn't necessarily need to understand or maybe he does feel you, he does understand, but he's not going to talk to you like a woman. And my partner would literally use those words. He said, listen, you don't want me to step into my feminine now because <laughs> then I'm no longer the man you fell in love with. Like, I'm simply not going to do that. Even though you think this is what you desire, I know it's not. So this is where he will cut me off. And yeah, so anyway, I hope this... Uh... <laughs> Beautiful, that's very powerful of him. That's very mm -hmm. powerful. I, I remember uh, once my husband and I was like, I had this really bad day and um, and I was like, I was really sad. And I was like talking to him, like sharing my emotions and other stuff. And he was like, babe, you need to see your girls. You need to talk with someone who will respond better because I would love to help you, but I can't take that away from you. But I can be with you in this moment I can be your support when you're dealing with that but you need to go to check with someone who can actually respond to that better I can't I can't and I and that's so powerful in the first first trigger of mine was like 
you're not going to you do not want to listen to me but the second mm-hmm. my second thought was like oh my god you're so right with that you're so right i don't need like you to take this burden of me i need to take care of myself and i need to take that to women which actually brings me to this very interesting point that you made so and it's just, it's such a great thing that you've said we need our sisters and i think it's a very big problem right now nowadays especially in western world uh that we just get stick into work home work home work home it's like when was the last time when you met your 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 friends your girlfriend i don't know two years ago what that's that's just that's just like torture. That's stripping away like from that's stripping your femininity femininity away from you. And you want to be a woman without your women friends, without role models of of women, without your you know capacity to really express your emotions and 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 be with them. That's that's you're really doing yourself such a harm and you, you just don't know, you just don't realize that yet. But it will, it will come back to you at some point when you'll be overwhelmed, frustrated and in despair. And that that's a really sad thing. It's a very, it's such a common scenario. It really breaks my heart when I listen to these stories of my clients. Um, but I'm, I, I, I honestly don't want to dive deep why it happened like that. I mean, there are some historical reasons all over the world why it, we're, we're conditioned to, to, to be this way. But the thing is that we don't have to stay this way. We can choose another. And we can actually go back to what's natural. And I love what, I love what you said, that you right now being a mother, you actually appreciate that having other women having other people around you like not leaning totally on your husband which would actually i think it makes a disaster for many relationships like this is my one and only person my friend my lover my confidant my priest my accountant my everything and it's like these are too many roles for one person you need a Mm -hmm. whole village for that (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I, I very it, it resonates me whenever I hear and I also speak about that as a woman we need women role models and we need other women in our life we need women friendships to support ourselves we need that period it's 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 actually we should really take care about that um yeah and um Nalaya please tell me. This is this is a question that I really love to ask each time I have a guest. Um, if this is the last day of your life and everything that you've ever did, your work, everything, it just vanishes away. And you had this one thing to actually tell to people and you know they would listen. You know they would practice that. You know they will implement that. What would be that thing that you'd say to them? To stop making excuses for not Mm. really allowing love in. Mm. Because I've seen it for myself, like in this journey that I'm in with my husband, where it's like, you know, it's not just because we know from the beginning we're soul partners and therefore the rest of our journey is going to be easy. (laughs) I've seen that actually um, layer by layer by layer, my heart is opening more, allowing more in. And because our female bodies are shaped in that way, you know, like we receive in the sexual union, it is also energetically like that. And I think the, <clears throat> the difficulty therefore is not to love, like that comes natural, but to let it in. Mm-hmm. And in order for it to enter you, It requires us to break down barriers and stories and narratives like he doesn't understand me. Or nowadays I meet a lot of women who say, you know, oh, I'm on my path of purpose. Um, My business is just about to flourish. I'm going to wait a couple more years and then I will have space for my life partner to come to come. And to me, all of that just sounds like an excuse, honestly, because 
we as women have fertile years and it's almost like I don't know where the shame comes from but to actually admit and also me I had to go through that like to not allow my desire to be with my life partner to be ridiculed in any shape or form Mm. it's like you don't need to come across as desperate to just admit I want my life partner and I want to start a family so it's it's very interesting like the the things that I see these days in in women um and it's hard right because we often have multiple experiences in relationship they didn't work out so you've had experiences of a broken heart so then how do you step into the wisdom of your heart due to those experiences it's like you need those experiences to know what you want but what often happens is those experiences create shells and narratives and stories Mm -hmm. and very smart women who are you know they can actually trick themselves um, in in creating some story pointing fingers um, or focusing on their work like I just said or whatever it is that prevents them from actually being open to allow a man in because that's the way I see it Um, yeah so I guess this is a long answer to your question but it's really like fuck just allow love really because I haven't worked for almost two years and for me it has always been a desire to when I'm pregnant I just want to be pregnant because Mm -hmm. I knew that it's just going to be a very unique experience and when we truly allow ourselves to just be pregnant when we become pregnant we enter an altered state of consciousness and it's so trippy it's Mm -hmm. like there's nothing compared to that because you're in the ultimate state of the feminine and you know, I I am very inspired. I always create. I've had many people knock on my door throughout these two years because my life is the representation of that, what I teach, which is why I put it on my website. And now I see a window, right? Like right before we're going to have our next pregnancy, I do want to offer my work again because I feel like I owe it. (laughs) Like I owe it to uh, people who follow me because I feel like it's these days extra hard to be in the resonance that you need to be in in order to attract the right person Mm. Um, because we get distracted by stories. We get fooled. We get, you know, all of these apps that exist nowadays, which I don't believe in. It's like, no, no, if you are in the resonance, this person will get like will come into your reality either through a connection that you already have or someone that you met once upon a time somewhere will reconnect with you. Like that's how the universe works. Yeah. And so if it's okay, I'm I'm gonna offer <laughs> oh, my dare to love. You did, I would just say, guys, like, do you hear that? If if you want to really dive deep into the program that Nalaya has, just just listen right now because if she's going to have another beautiful baby, you're not gonna get it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, because like it's such a dedication. Um, but right now I'm I'm really I do feel really energized. Okay, I didn't sleep because my baby is getting a tooth. But <laughs> other than that, I feel like I, I have clarity. I have creative life force. Um, and I really want to offer this. Um, so it's called Dare to Love. Um, and it was my most successful course in the past. And as I mentioned before, this time I will only offer it to the strong independent woman. Mm-hmm. So if you resonate with that in one way or another, that is your women's circle. Um, because the power of coming together as a group is to share our story. So the entire course is built on my stories, my journey, but also stories of people I've worked with in the past. So it's it's really this weaving of all these stories coming together. And I truly believe, um, and that's why I, I love talking to you, because you are also not holding back from sharing your own story. And that's really how we absorb the wisdom, because due to the pandemic everyone has become a life coach everyone is like with their picture perfect instagram sharing wisdom but it's rare i find to meet people who dare to share their story and so i do my best like i said i I don't necessarily identify with being an intimacy coach but I, i i do serve love it's like all the lessons regarding love regarding the feminine it's an ongoing journey whether i teach or don't teach i always share on instagram my stories because All I want is for people to feel inspired to dare to love, basically. 
Beautiful. So the program is Three Weeks of Darkness. That is more based on shamanic principles because I used to live in Peru. So I, I received a lot of um, initiations. I did a lot of work with different, um, let's say, different perspectives from different uh, shamanic perspectives. So that is integrated in the darkness because the darkness is about pulling out the roots, looking at the ancestry, ex-relationships, shadows, patterns. And then the, the other three weeks are the weeks of light and that is based more on tantric principles mm -hmm. um, i also used to live in india so everything i received there regarding um, spiritual understanding tantric initiations that's what i put into the weeks of light because it's all about pleasure the value of pleasure allowing your sexual energy to become part of how you integrate your new truth your new values and allow that to begin become part of how you step into your security so to like let go of protection and feel more secure in the woman you are and then to allow the universe to simply offer you, you know? like you're the one who receives you magnetize you attract that's the nature of the feminine and that's why I also feel like these apps don't really work because they're just a mental loop of having you repeat all these dates that don't work out yeah. and then you have more weight of like where's the proof that true love actually exists mm -hmm. and that's why I feel like stories work better I recently actually recorded a podcast with one of my clients who found her true love I think only like a week after we finished there to love so wow, that's going to be amazing. oh I'll put I'll give you the link of my podcast uh, so people can listen to stories no like that's what I like okay awesome now I also um Having you on that on that point, just just tell us where can people find you? And by the way, all of those links will be under this video, so you can check it and you can just register for the course, uh, and just feel free to do that. But please, Nalaya, speak now and just tell us where can people find you. Uh, Nalaya Chakana .com. Um, and Instagram Nalaya. Uh, I don't know what you call this, like the. The, the dash, flat right? thing, <laughs> the dash, <laughs> Nalaya dash Chakana. Um, and the podcast is called Dare to Love. I think when you type in Dare to Love, everything should pop up. I think my Instagram, my yeah, I my website. I've listened to a few episodes of your podcast on Spotify, so it's there. Hmm. So it's there. Amazing. Um, I also listened to. Oh, and you actually found me on Mind Valley. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I I love making meditation. So this is a paid app, so it's not accessible for just anyone. Oh no, um, on, but yeah, Omvana, it's, yeah, it's on Omvana. Yeah. If you guys are are interested in meditations, uh, Omvana is a great app, and there are also Malaya's, um meditations there. I really enjoyed the tantric meditations for couples. Me and my husband we really, really love them. Uh, we go back to them sometimes. And um, so basically, Nalaya, thank you so much for this episode. You really bring so much light to my channel. I hope we can see each other again in the future. And I really keep my thumbs for you and my fingers crossed for everything that you plan for yourself. And um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you with love with all my heart. Yeah, thank you so much. It's really beautiful to connect with you. And I... Even though I couldn't read anything in Polish on your site, <laughs> I could just feel like, yeah, you're you're really like a sister. Like your approach to intimacy is very similar to me. It's not all about sex. It's really about the connection. And I could sense that in your, I don't know, I could just sense it. So I'm, I'm happy to meet you. And thank you for also sharing with your vulnerability. And I, yeah, I truly wish for you to flourish. Thank you so much. So I'll, I'll send this to my Polish friends and hopefully it will ripple out into Beautiful. their network. Beautiful. Well. Thank you so much. Okay. So have a wonderful time and bye. <laughs>